Ndi ba ye kene munu. Um, I'm here tonight to speak on the topic of Umpuru Onyekuru. Um, I think the literal translation will be, you reap what you sow. But one could also translate it as to say, the seed that you sow, if you go the exact translation. And the idea came from Patrick after he called me up. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Europe and, you know, insisted I come to uh, exercise my civic responsibility as an Igbo man and speak uh, at this forum. So it's my privilege and honor to be here with you. And the sub-theme is reinventing enterprise in Igbo. Because I'm an as in Afia. So when I talk about enterprise, I mean literally trading reinventing enterprise, the opportunity for enterprise. Ebidom now, by just describing what we consider as an Igbo, which is Southeast Nigeria, and taking it just from a literal geographic translation, because obviously Igbo spread out to Delta State and down to River State and even Cross River and around. But if you say Igbo in Nigeria, people will think of the Southeast. Uh, this definition does not include in the Igbo being a, a, a Buja, more Kanu, more Lagos. Talk less of in the be abroad in diaspora. But in the Igbo being a Southeast Nigeria, our population today is 22 million. Our GDP, it comes out to 9.7 trillion naira. It put a 27 billion dollars based on 2018 data. Out of that 22 million population, 40% be youth. And youth will mean in the Dedica from 30 years and under. It was called a GDP divided by population of 416,000 Naira per annum per person. So in the the statistics are here. Or the Because you can do something with it. In the Kuanyana and Igbo, from a political context, I'm with five states in Southeast Nigeria out of 36, so representing almost 14% in terms of the states. I'm with 95 local governments out of 774 in the whole country, which works out to 12%. In terms of voting population, based on the statistics in the INEC for this election, I were 8.3 million voters out of 84 million voters, so roughly about 9% of the total voting population. Kita election, the MSG election, you need the election map, and you uh, the red map on the PDP, green map on the APC. But in the Bonine, the whole of Iboland voted for PDP in terms of majority. So, obviously, it occurred was something. And I like Indian MA business. So we clearly went for the party that will support business. But our total vote of 1.6 million is actually down about 1 million compared to the election of 2015, where we, we gave PDB something like 2.6 million votes. So obviously, there has been a lot of, uh, I would say, rearrangement of votes by INEC from this exercise. Since there were more voters registered this time around, than there was in 2015, but we're still uh, short by one million compared to what we did the last time. Somebody waking up, I want to wake up. See, okay, kita ije tia telling the PDP. I can I can never again in the new administration. It is the mebu anye before, and that's one of the recurring themes I find sometimes when I speak to the bany about oh abu monyibo. So. The center will not give me my fair share. We've been oppressed. We are oppressed by Nigeria. And really, my, the main meat of my presentation is to say, stop. Stop feeling oppressed. There's enough that we have that we can actually ignore Nigeria and move forward, and move ourselves forward. <laughs> this slide, Nakawa, now this uh, the total GDP of Southeast Nigeria 
total 9.7 trillion naira as of 2018 data. In the composition, I have Funa, commerce and industry. You can do more small, small businesses around, total 900 billion, 9%. The MS services, and that banks, uh, telecoms, represent $7.1 billion, which is 73% of the total. Agriculture, 12%. Oil, I went to the oil, not the state, and the 6%. But in the total budget of all the five states, for 2019, it's only 870 billion naira out of a total of 9.7 trillion. So, in the natural, when we have water, the input from university is the total in our government. Government represents 9% of the economy of the Southeast. You have ignored the remaining 91% because in natural, that is really the meat of this. That within Igbo land, we are naturally enterprising people. So that everybody, no matter what you studied, you should be thinking of what business can I set up. If I can't set up, you think of who your, who, which friend of yours has started a business, how can I support him and grow it bigger so we can all make more, rather than waiting to look for a job with government. Amen at this slide, but I them what put that bit on a more services. Put a $7.1 billion, which is 73% of the total economy of Southeast. It can work one year again. If you need me about if you telecoms, is about 10% are representing here the 700 billion naira. Education, 900 billion naira, 13%. Others, about 1 trillion, representing 15%. Financial services, banks and others, 1.2 trillion. But trade, in the Nazoafia, is 44%, a total of 2.9 trillion naira. As 44% of the economy. So, and if you put that 44% of services against the total economy of the Southeast, it's really one third. So, like I said, if you put that university, CK Chow a government, you're looking at 9% opportunity. If you put that university, CK Bidon, your own trading business, you can potentially fall into the 33%, one third of the opportunity that's facing everybody in the Southeast. The question is how you do your own. After the Civil War, we had this apprentice model. Because after the war, there are a lot of young men and also women left stranded. So that was what really began to propel my boy and Oga structure. So what I can do put I say I can go there, somebody boy na open up cosmetic on a more spare parts, more building materials. We can go all the way back for three or four years. From there, Ojebi Donke. This is an age old model which you have had. And but that one boy in our world, even though no general school formally, but the one amota over the three or four year period, on amote to and about business ideas, where to locate his business, how to put the price of his business, the products on him, or service on him, who to supply, who to buy goods from. Yeah. Who to sell the goods to in terms of customers? Who are the other business relationships and contacts he needs to have? Then, how much are this or dibo? A don't you know? A new gun here. Ojebida, his own shop. Okay. From there, his own business would expand, and after that, he becomes his own man. And that structure has created time and time again young entrepreneurs out of Igbo land, which we are known for. And the structure has become regenerative over the generation. So this is Oga. Well, one by all only from three to five years. He himself one day becomes an Oga. He will then find somebody to work for him. After that, the Dukonya Hono, the thing I now manufacture other entrepreneurs. This is something that we have we have as a culture, as a people, that is totally different from other ethnic groups in Nigeria. Only Igbo people have it. And each other how to improve yourself. You really need to look inside and say, strength comes from the things I have as an advantage versus other people. Sort of us saying, oh, I am water oil, or uh, we are not in government in Abuja, or we don't have seaports like in the Yoruba and Lagos. Let's look at what we have. And if you look at what you have, you can see there's a lot of opportunity. 
This my boy structure has created many markets. In the name, the turnover there is over a billion dollars. Just people selling all kind of items per annum. About the market turnover is over five hundred million dollars per annum. If you count all the different shops and traders and the little commissions they are making, area area market over three billion dollars annual turnover. This is real e-commerce happening in front of us that we take for granted. Alaba, further afield, outside of Southeast, you see um, Alaba, $3 billion. Urban LA Electronics and all kinds of parts there. Computer Village in Lagos, and LA computers and phones and all of that. $2 billion turnover. And these are statistics. in the G1, Nakopi, Neme. So I know everything. From Balogo Market in Lagos, over $3 billion of turnover. So when you put it all together, what the Igbo land has that is different from other ethnic groups in Nigeria is that we actually have an inbuilt venture capital structure. We have an inbuilt venture capital. Kita Ndiyo Igbo, Ije Harvard Business School, or Ije Stanford, I signal venture capital. Abu Niwe is the idea, Nyegego. The person in Nyegego is also giving money to 100 other people. Statistically, he expects that maybe 80 of you will fail. But 20, 10 or 20 will survive and suddenly make a million times more money than all the money gave to other people. And that is the same structure that feeds the commerce of Igbo land. Because if I think of today, Omoakani in our boy, in different shops, whether it's chemist or spare parts, you know, drugs, cosmetics, around Igbo land, you probably have easily 100,000 young men. Statistically, they don't have any known this year. Probably in two years, 50% will fail. In five years, you probably not have more than 20% of them. But I tell you, in five years, that 20% will have more money than about probably 100 times more money than the cumulative amount that you do have any owner. That is venture capital. But then, how do we move that forward? Today's world, how do we scale what has become what was seen as an informal structure? Uh, you know, in the Nigeria, how do we scale it up in modern society that we have today? And that is the challenge. In trying to reinvent the enterprise, you then think of, let's see how we can disaggregate it. And if you really look at the structure, the fundamentals of the enterprise, you see now that Oga and Waboy relationship is that there's education, and there's information, and then there's capital. Again, I repeat, there's education, there's information, and then there's capital formed out of it. And if you really look at the educational component of that apprentice model, one boy is actually getting a practical business education from the moment he moves into his, uh, serv his servitude. Because he understands business ideas, he understands business location, he understands price setting, he knows supplier selection, he knows customer management, he has business contacts, and then he don't you know, he begins his own business expansion. You see? But even though in Delia and Akupo, that's exactly what he's learning. On the other hand, a typical young man or woman will go to primary school, go to secondary school, my father get a nursery self, Japo University, Tiyoko and Masters. On one hand, my boy graduates as a business owner. When he graduates, he actually has his own business. On the other hand, when we graduate out of formal universities, we come out to seek employment. Now, how then can you marry an educated graduate and make him to think like an entrepreneur? And that is the challenge of our model. If you consider that we live in an information age where knowledge and technology is really the competitive advantage, and data is the new oil. And data is all around us. In fact, today, as you are in this room, we are all products because statistically we are in this room and someone who has a device can probably monitor all the mobile signals emanating from all the mobile phones. And if we are registered on social networks, that is information that somebody else can use. So data is actually the new opportunity that everybody needs to think about how we used to push ourselves forward. Imagine, for instance, 
that now, well, the market now, that I could have a system to collect all the information from all the guys and all the my boys now, all the kita. Suddenly, I will have massive information to show pricing arbitrage between different shops in, the, in that market. It will be there on the computer, but it's not available easily to you and I. That is why Ijaf Yakita, Sinina Jigofan, Abufan Aineku, one small boy when he came back, Osaf Yakita, Osigi, Oga, Chelo, go to the cook, Sigi Koja will take the fan. And you've looked around for one hour looking for the fan, you have not found, but he has information. He quickly goes to somewhere that Anna Elena in warehouse, but take a brand new one, Nyegia, which you didn't even know there was around. You'll be happy. You pay him, and he moves on. It is that information that has allowed him to make a profit. He may not even have a shop. He may not even have the opportunity of being my boy to anybody. He just that he's happened to be in that market and saw you coming. But all of us now with technology can leverage on that opportunity, which is really what reinvention can do. Think about it. If you're a young graduate and just come out of university, in the old traditional sense, if you graduated, you have to have a business idea. You then have to find a, a, a shop, a location, for rent. Then you have to figure out how to sell what you're selling. Who to supply you whatever it is. Customers, business contacts, financing, expansion before you see profit. But today you can cut through all that and go straight. All that thing that my boy learned over three to five years, if you understand data and technology, you can graduate. In fact, while you're still in school, you can start. Before you, you come out, you're ready and you're running. You go from business idea straight to customers, straight to profit. Because the customers are already in front of you. And there are already many platforms that aggregate your data. And that data is the customer base. Let me give you an example of young entrepreneurs who are leveraging technology today. Um, Kingsley Ayogo is from... I met him on Instagram in 2017. He is a visual artist, and he does the kind of art, and about well, hyper-realistic art. Let me just quickly turn over. The picture on the left-hand side is a self-portrait he did, which popped up on my phone when I was in a museum in Los Angeles, and I was looking at a similar artwork. Again, the algorithms of data has already determined that I'm from Enugu State because I have many contacts and I go to Enugu all the time. And I'm looking at art, and I'm looking at hyper-realistic art. Hyper -realistic art. And while in LA, I got an image of this picture, which I like very much. I, and I started chatting to him. I told him I'd like to buy it. By the time I came back later that year, we got to know each other. And he was staying in an abandoned building, not very far from Eba, Eba Anna Tunnel just as you're going down Garden Avenue. That was where he was staying. I thought he was an illegal occupant because it, didn't, it looked very strange. But inside the abandoned building, I carved out one room and made a studio where he stays and paints all day and all night. But he had what? He had a mobile phone and he had an Instagram account. And I noticed that this is particular painting was over 40,000 people had viewed it. By the time I came home to Nigeria, he had actually sold it. Today, he earns about $1,000 per painting. He makes easily $5 million a year. He has moved from Enugu to Lagos, although he comes to Enugu to exhibit. And the picture of the Camry uh, added in this slide is the car he bought yesterday. <laughs> he bought it yesterday. And this is a young man only, whose only product idea is the talent that God gave him, I can draw, I can paint, you know. Richard Odo is a fitness instructor. He's from Isuzu in Enugu State. He has only Wayak. He was orphaned, and then he said, since I don't have money to go to school, what is it can I do? He did some jobs as um, a waiter. He was a cleaner in an internet uh, shop, business center but got interested in fitness and began to follow it on social media and on magazines. And then when he discovered that he could use Facebook and Instagram and the opportunity of those, he began to post his own workouts. He exercised and how he exercised, he posted on social media 
from there he will get contacts who people will tell him oh yeah come and train me in my house and this young man who only has wayek earns about 300,000 naira a month that's going from business idea the customers are in the data you're using instead of using your your phone to be sharing gossip you can actually use that phone for business if you take out richard's phone he will kill you because that is his business too you know that is him working out and he he works out in the gym i belong to in lagos and he, he has a lot of important customers including davido one of the major music stars that's a young man that didn't go to university chiamaka obuakwe 26 years old she has a bachelor's degree she had worked in different jobs jumia some other it job but she just didn't like having a formal job because on the day she's restless they will suck her she'll be depressed but one thing she knew she liked she liked traveling she then said why don't i organize a you know tourism business and she organized trips post the trips on instagram and invite people to pay and if you check the organization, like she has a trip now to Oida in Benin Republic. It's a very nice resort called Casa de Papa. It's 150,000 naira per head. You have a three-day weekend and stay by the beach in very beautiful location. It's 150,000 naira per head. If you try to do it yourself, you easily spend 250,000. But she has already figured out all the logistics that if you pay her, just show up with your passport and you have a pleasant holiday. So that's what she does. And she makes easily five, six million a year. Because by the time she aggregates 30 people, she may pay them only half of what she's collected. The rest is for her and her staff. And she keeps on going. So that's the opportunity of leveraging on data, which is the information that is all around us today. Because as we use our phones and go on social networks, we are actually the product. Because when we are looking at something on Facebook, Facebook then knows that, ah, this eyeball is looking at this and is advertising revenue because they can go and charge somebody else and say, come and put something on Facebook because Mr. Choke is looking at it along with everybody in this hall. How can we turn that around and use that for our own creative business? And each of these three people, one of the things they have learned and valued is that the same way they can get across to their customers instantly on social media, the same way the customers can also get back to them if something happens. So they began to imbibe the character and values of our parents of old, that discipline, that honesty, to be able to promise. What you promise is actually what you get. Because if there is a mistake, it reverberates very quickly. And you, you complain on Instagram and everybody knows about it. And I ask myself, you know, while they are all still individual entrepreneurs, there's opportunity for them to scale up because and get associations of other young men and women and become virtual conglomerates online. And it's there. They just have to maintain that discipline. And if you think about it, why can't Anibo become a place where we are known for honesty and integrity. Interestingly, in my business, I, I run an investment bank. And you would think that to move transactions, you know, like if I wanted to pay you something, you want to be sure that you've collected, you've collected the cash from me before you deliver the goods to me. And that is simple how commerce traditionally works. But Interestingly, at a very high level, where I'm dealing with companies that are moving tens of billions of naira, there's not enough time to make sure that that money goes. The actual transaction happens based on integrity. So I'll have a situation where a client will move two billion naira to my account because it trusts Afroinvest. But there has not been any paperwork. All that we have said is on the phone, move the two billion. As soon as I get it, I'm going to move the securities to your own system. So, you find that in the mo biggest economies, the same happens in the, on the New York Stock Exchange in London. For big transactions to happen, you actually need a lot of integrity and honesty and transparency for it to work. And that is one opportunity that we can also think of owning as a people. Forget the rest of Nigeria and all the issues that come from you know, voter suppression or the voter cancellation, or not even being able to exercise your civic rights. 
as a people, we can own that. And you will find that the rest of the country will come to do business with us because they can trust that whatever it is they do, is that what they're going to get. So, therein is the story. If you can, if you have information, I can leverage data, it can lead to wealth creation. As this young man have, have ex ex exemplified, leveraging data can lead to capital. But how can you apply that model to existing businesses? Today, I dare say that every business must have an effective online presence. I still meet a number of CEOs who are proud to say that they are not on WhatsApp, they are not on social media, uh, what is that rubbish? Not knowing that they are actually missing a massive opportunity of how to run their business. Every business must be on the, uh, online, must have a, an effective website, must be able to take two or three of the social media platforms and communicate effectively to its customers instantly, real time. Because if there's an opportunity, that's how you touch them. And if there's a problem, you know instantly and begin to solve it before your people even report to you. And of course, if you're big enough, you should even have a payment portal for your customers to pay you online without you having to wait for them to exchange cash physically with your staff. Because you then have your, the opportunity of taking the money in advance. Let's look at a typical business like Peace Mass Transit. This is an established business. 40 bus terminals across the country, present in 19 states, has 2,000 plus buses, moves about 30,000 passengers daily. And we're all familiar with Peace Mass Transit. It's fairly effective all over the country. How could they potentially reinvent themselves? If you look at 30,000 passengers a day, that is 30,000 eyeballs in a bus. If Peace Mass Transit is keeping an electronic record of all their customers, which is a manifest. The same thing that you do when you board a plane. You actually put your name, your phone number. Sometimes they ask you for an ID, they scan it, it has your date of birth. That already begins to give the business a demographic profile of their customers. From that demographic profile of their customers, they actually have more eyeballs in an, a year than Linda Ikeji, who is making billions because she's doing a blog that has uh, 4 million followers. They have 30,000 daily eyeballs, 210 every month, 10.9 million per annum. And these are people that are hostage in a bus for easily four to eight hours. If you have that information, the same company could go and show it to Nigerian breweries or to MTN or the Cadbury's and say, you know, come and put a TV in this bus so you can put your advertising because my people are they are captive. I can show you from my profile of customers that 10% are above 60, 40% are between 20 to 50, and the rest are children. And then that can begin to tell the advertisers, oh, what can I sell on a bus? What kind of information? The same business can be used as a courier service. You can sell pure water. You can actually package your lunch, some of which they are doing already. Um, but with systems, you, you can monitor it so effectively, you can take that value chain to a level where the bus business becomes the tail wagging the dog because you make more money from advertising and other services than the actual transport fare that you're charging customers. And that therein lies the opportunity. Now, if you look at this 9.7 trillion naira economy in the Southeast, there is a lot inside it. Government is only 9%. Within that services sector, trade and commerce, trade especially, each and every young person, each and every individual ought to be thinking, what can I do? Is it to make necklaces? Is it to make clothes, clothing? I see a number of fashion people, they design clothes, they post it and get clients from there. You know, but as you walk through that process, you can see more opportunities in there. And don't just stop at it. The Southeast economy, as small as it might seem, at $26.9 billion, is actually bigger than the economy of Iceland, which is only $27 billion. Our economy of all of Zambia, $25.8 billion. Or all of Senegal, $24 billion. Bear that in mind. And that tells you the opportunity. Before you then add on the knock-on business that comes from interacting from Ndibu, outside of the region. 
from Igbo, that people in diaspora and people around Nigeria. Thank you very much. <laughs>